before we move on, did you want to discuss George's most recent blog post? Sure. Um, so George um, had a blog post where he said, let me, let me, um, let me look, bring it up right now. I'm going to spoil for the audience said, ahead of time. Nope. It's not about Winds of Winter. I know. It's not about Winds of Winter. Um, he says, I've never claimed to be perfect, but the, but the good folks at Vanity Fair want to say so. Who am I to argue? Of course, they're not actually saying that I am perfect. They're talking about Blackwater, one of episode one of the episodes I wrote for Game of Thrones. I scripted four, and yes, Blackwater is my own favorite of those. Although I thought the Lion and the Rose turned out very well too. Um, if you haven't seen the other episodes on the list, um, he's talking about he's like he agrees with that the suitcase from Ma Mad Men is really good. Osmandius episode from Breaking Bad. <clears throat> Sopranos has lots of great episodes, but Pine Barrens was special. The Wire they picked episode was the one where Stringer died, but uh, for him, Omar's death hit harder. He uh, really likes Black, Black Mirror, but he thinks that Black Mirror episode San Junipero is the one he would watch over and over again. He thinks that um, the episode that was more perfect than the one on the list for Six Feet Under was their finale. finale and... Um, uh and he, he 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 wanted to see something from rome deadwood or fargo on the list but uh he did not but he's talking about this vanity fair article that carmine and i went over briefly the, the problem is that we haven't necessarily like seen these episodes or if we have it's been so long that it's tough mm -hmm. but <clears throat> this list essentially has the one with the embryos from Friends. Friends, the one with the embryos, so, which... So so that episode of Friends is the one where they have the contest that if the boys lose, they have to get rid of the ducks and the birds. And if the girls lose, they have to trade apartments, it's right? Trade apartments. And of course, it's, it's, yeah. it's an infamous episode. I love it. What, it. what is it the best Friends episode? I don't know. But it's the one where the girls lose because nobody can identify Chandler Bing's job. It's a brilliant yeah, episode. That's funny. I fucking that's love funny. it. But yeah, the, th the thing with Friends episodes is there's really solid jokes that I remember from Friends, but I don't necessarily think of entire episodes as being great. There are definitely like solid jokes where I'm just like, I remember that joke and that joke was really funny and it hit hard. And then, but I just don't remember that many episodes where I'm just like, oh, that whole episode was great. So I don't know. It's just how I perceive Friends. Maybe everybody else has a very different perception of Friends. As someone who watched reruns of Friends religiously, like for mm. me, yeah, I remember all the jokes. We were on a break, and uh, yeah. you know some some of the Thanksgiving episodes were fucking phenomenal. You know, like but whatever. That's that's a decent list. I I just haven't seen everything on right. the Vanity Fair list. But I always find it funny that whenever anybody talks mm -hmm. about the best episodes of Game of Thrones, they always put Blackwater there. Which, by the way. A great episode phenomenal episode yeah yet i i wouldn't if, if i was putting up a list of like the top three or top five best ice and fire game of thrones episodes i don't think i would i don't think black i don't think blackwater would be on there i would put um, the problem is that like half i think half of the episodes from from season one are better than blackwater blackwater is oh, yeah. great but half, half the episodes from season one are better uh um, let, let me let me put it like this if Blackwater's a 9 out of 10, there are, like, almost every single episode in season 1 is a 10 out of 10. So, like, it, right. it's, it's not that Blackwater is, is, like, worse. It's not. It's just, you know, there are better ones. Like, for example, we did yeah. the, um, we did a uh, podcast or a brief video with Glytus when he was talking about all the episodes of Game of Thrones. And I think he asked, yeah. he asked both of us what our favorite episode, which which ones we think are the best. You said season one, episode 10. Like, I think I said, I'm trying to find it here. It's the episode where Tywin is first introduced. And it also ends with Littlefinger going, taking his dagger out and putting it to Ned's neck and going, I did warn you not to trust me. I think that one is probably one of the best. I think Glytus himself, Glytus himself even chose um, the Battle of Castle Black as mm. the best episode. And then he chose, yeah, the because my favorite was the, the last episode of season one. He, he put that at number two. Mm. And he had Blackwater at, he had Blackwater at, is that, is, does he have it at three? He did put Blackwater very high, but. Yeah, he put Blackwater at three, and he put the Red Wedding at four. 
Um, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I still would say like half of season one is bad. <laughs> I think so too. But. Yeah. The, the episode I was talking about is my favorite is you win or you die. Um, it's the one where mm. Ned confronts Cersei and we get the infamous, you play the game of Thrones, yes. you win or you die. There's no middle ground. Tywin's first appearance, which is fucking brilliant. It's where he's cutting up the stag. Um, it's, you know, of course the, the, the throne room scene, it, it's, it's really good. It's the, it's also the one where Cal Drogo, uh, uh declares that he's going to go invade Westeros. Very good scene. Even the next episode is pretty good. The pointy end. And then of course, episode nine, Baylor, mm -hmm. just so many phenomenal episodes in yeah. season one that like, honestly, I would, I would, if, if people chose episode 10, fire and blood over Blackwater, I would agree with that. Like, I would say, yeah, that's one of the best episodes in Game of Thrones. 100%. I know people like to say yeah. The Red Wedding. The Red Wedding is only, like, one-third of that entire episode. Because other stuff happens in that episode, yeah, but too. <clears throat> that is one of the things, is whether or not the episode has a really good ending. And mm -hmm. the thing about season one is that every episode, except for one episode, has a really good ending. The True. episode I'm thinking about that does not have a great ending is the one that just ends with... with like Ned looking at Arya fighting with Sirio and he gets this like weird look on his face and they end the episode and you're like, what was that? Episode three, <clears> Lord <throat> but Snow. All the, uh, yeah. All the rest of the episodes end with like such a powerful punch. Like, oh my God, I've got to see the next episode, you know? Um, like even think of like the end of season two where where Sam is like hiding behind the rock and the, and the others go walking by and you mm. end the season that way. You're like, Oh my God. So fucking perfect. You know? Um, so it's just, I, I'm Blackwater. It ends with Cersei on the throne, like about to poison Tommen. Right. Yes. And then Tywin busts everybody, in. every, yeah. And then every, Tywin busts in, but it's kind of the busting in, I don't know if it works that well. You're kind of like, wait, what? Like, what happened? Like, I, we, we just were seeing all this fighting, and now the resolution to the fight was off screen. And, and, you know, I don't know if you can do it that way. You can't, like, show fighting and then not show fighting as your climax. Like, like if you're not going to show fighting, don't show fighting at all. If you're going to show fighting, show fighting. But you can't, like, show fighting and then have your climax be not fighting. So I think the ending is a little weak. You know, even though it's tense, like like Cer like Cersei on that throne and everything, like Loras and Tywin walking through a door is not exactly, I don't know. It's not it's not exactly the powerful punch as as most Game of Thrones episodes end with. I would so have, I don't know. Maybe you disagree. I I I do disagree that I don't it was a fine ending. The one thing I would change is because the first person that walks through the door was Loris in Renly's armor. Mm. So show watchers don't know this because it's not – it's only until like later seasons does the High Sparrow mention it when he's arresting, when he's arresting yeah. Loris. But Loris is wearing Renly's uh, stag armor. What I wished was that Loris bursts through with some of the – you know, some of his own, own men. And at first Cersei thinks, holy shit. It, it, it's it's Stannis or Renly, mm. it's them. And then... Or it's Renly, yeah. Right, and then... She looks up and it's Loras. And it, right. right, she looks up and it's he takes off his helmet and she's confused. And then Tywin... That's how I would change. And then Tywin comes back. But it almost seems like they walk in together if you go back and watch it again. That's the only one thing yeah, I would absolutely. change. Yeah, absolutely. And the armor, and frankly, they never explain the armor. and Because we all know... Well, you know, book fans know that like the Renly armor thing is is is, is an important plot point because like... Loras is riding. Loras is wearing Renly's army armor, so everybody thinks it's Renly's ghost, and so they all they all freak out. Mm -hmm. But the armor is distinctive; it's like green, right? And like, the, keep in mind that like everything in the show, they've muted the colors, so it's not like it's not even that distinctive. Like you really pay attention to armor, um, and so I think you noticed, but most people are like probably didn't even think that that Loras was wearing. Renly's armor or like a, an interesting armor. He like takes they, off they the would one half so fast. Like you barely <laughs> yeah. see the stag like antlers. You barely see it. Yeah. Like if it were done again, I would make the armor much more distinctive mm -hmm. and then have him wear like keep the armor on longer 
And then, because imagine how weird that would be. The doors open and it's this mysterious character with this like emerald green armor and these stag antlers. And yep. you're like, holy shit, what is coming for me? <gasps> and, the, and she has this gasp of fear. Like, what is that? And then he takes off his helmet and it's, and it's Loris. You know, it's missed opportunity. You're totally right. You're totally <laughs> right, Carmine. You're totally right. That is, oh my God. You're totally right. It was such a missed opportunity. <laughs> 